Deputy. Am I get last can Corla, uh, Minister? It hardly needs explaining because it's actually very simple. Um, but I'm just wondering, in the context of a recruitment and retention crisis, uh, in the context of ever escalating waiting lists, um, and uh, in the context of, of a seemingly endless budget for agency staff and indeed the Children's Hospital, why a recruitment embargo has been placed on uh, the hiring of staff within the health service? I believe it was wrong when it was implemented uh, by the Fianna Fáil government. And I, and I fought it at that time, and it's equally wrong now in the context of a recruitment and retention crisis which persists. I want to thank Deputy O'Reilly uh, for the important question. And I think it's important to clarify at the outset that I would not describe what's happening as a recruitment embargo in the health services, and nor indeed as the new Director General of the Health Service um, in his first memo that I read of this morning um, in, in, to his HSE leadership team. The issue can be accurately described as individual hospital groups and community health organisations across the HSE needing to live within their allocated budget. It shouldn't be seen as a radical concept uh, that when this House passes a budget which allows for the hiring of a certain number of additional staff, that hospital managers across the country and indeed uh, beyond hospitals as well, are expected to live within those budgets. Where individual hospital groups or CHOs have not submitted staffing plans in line with their budgets, certain measures and controls around recruitment have been put in place. So where a hospital or a CHO puts, in pla puts a plan in place that's in line with the budget and the plan is approved, off they go in relation to recruitment. But if you haven't bothered to put in a plan, you can't just willy-nilly make up your own recruitment plans. Indeed, the HSE will be proceeding with filling uh, around 2,000 additional approved and funded development posts. These are posts that those of us in this House and through the service plan we voted to fill. It will mean extra nurses, extra doctors, extra therapists as well. But the reason the HSE decided to introduce these measures is based on the high level of unfunded recruitment in 2018 and based on the fact that many of you in this House uh, would rightly have been highly critical of significant cost overruns in the health service in previous years and the impact that that has on other things that we may, to, may wish to do. The Director General has pointed out that this is for a period of three months, which ends next month um, as well. But it is important to say um, that posts are posts that have been approved uh, in line with development posts that there's funding for are absolutely uh, being filled. But you can't have a situation, and you wouldn't have it in any other government department or any other agency, where people are hiring staff with no relationship whatsoever to the budgetary realities which we in this House have given them. Deputy. That's Ken Corley. It's like deja vu all over again because the Minister's predecessor when Fianna Fáil were in government didn't call it an embargo either, but that's in fact what it was. We all know that that's what it was. I'm a little bit shocked, Minister, that you will come in and say that you uh, pay very well hospital managers who simply haven't bothered to submit a plan. Those are yours, your words, not mine. So you are happy that there are people within the health service at a very high level earning very high wages who simply are not bothered to do parts of their job. I, I find that wholly unsatisfactory. See, the fact is that we are spending €300 million Euros per annum on agency staff. So staff are still coming in. They're just coming in via the most expensive route. They're not being permanently employed. They're coming in via the most precarious and expensive route. Nobody is suggesting that there isn't a need to have sensible and controlled budgets. However, the budget that is out of control is the agency staff budget. So these staff are clearly needed. These managers, who can't be bothered to do some parts of their job, as you say, uh, are indeed hiring staff. They're just doing it in a really ineffective and expensive way. So you have to make a decision at some point. Are services going to be cut back? Are you going to be honest and say with pe to people, these are the services that we are going to have to cut? Or are we going to be in a position to offer people uh, full-time permanent jobs when there are full-time permanent vacancies being replaced by expensive agency staff. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Lasky and Corla. So I agree with you in relation to the need to tackle agency staff, and that's why in the new in the new deal that we've put in place with nurses and the new nurses contract, not just me, but the INMO themselves believe that these new measures will help reduce a dependency on agency staff and help recruit and retain more nurses in full-time permanent posts. That's the view of a union that's just accepted the new nurses contract as well. We are hiring additional staff. We will hire 2,000 or thereabouts additional staff in the Irish Health Service, and my record when it comes to actually increasing 
including frontline staff in the health service, um, shouldn't be misrepresented. Um, when, I, when I became uh, Minister for Health, 109,124 people work in the Irish Health Service. In March of this year, 118,984 people work in the health service. That's 346 additional consultants, 501 additional registers, 1,124 additional nurses and midwives, uh, 188 additional people in the ambulance service, 110 additional psychologists, and 599 uh, additional therapists. So we are increasing every single year uh, the number of staff. But we do have to have a situation, uh, Deputy O'Reilly, when we give out budgets in this House and we say to a hospital or a CHO, you, you have this staffing budget for this year, that you do actually put in plan a, pl a, a plan ar around that budget and not Thanks, around Minister. figures that don't match with that budget. Otherwise, we'll get into a very Final difficult question situation. from Deputy O'Reilly. Putting words in the eye and mouth, mouth, Minister, you know very well that what they said, that what they said was in the context of hiring full-time staff to replace agency. Yeah, but that's not happening. I mean, I can give you examples, and I have engaged with the HSE on this, of people, young nurses who are living in England, who came home here, who want to work here, who spent weeks after getting a letter, spent weeks waiting, and they're now considering going back to England because they can't get a permanent contract. Now, there is a need for these nurses. The hospital managers are bothered to recognise that there is a need for these nurses. And in the intervening time, they're paying agency staff to fulfil that role. So there is a recruitment embargo in place. And the result of that is going to be an escalating spend. Because I mean, you cite your own record in terms of increasing. But actually, what's increasing is the level of spend on agency. That is not going down. And it's not going down because the staff are not being converted from agency staff into full-time permanent staff. And it is costing more money per hour. You know that, and I know that. And yet there is a young woman who will next week go back to England. She had a letter of offer, okay. and she will go back to her job in England. Because quite frankly, she feels like the NHS oh wants her to work there, but she doesn't feel like the HSE wants her here. Minister, final response describe a situation where we're going to hire 2,000 additional staff this year as an embargo, because that suggests we're not hiring any more people. So a recruitment embargo means you're not recruiting more people, you're stopping recruitment. We're not. We're going to hire 2,000 more people. But what we're expecting hospital groups and CHOs to do is something that every other public service agency does across this country, every other government department does, and certainly every business and private sector employer does, which is live within their budget. And, you know, we vote on the budget in this House, we pass a service plan, we've debated on it, and then that, when that leaves that house, that, this house rather, that has to be delivered on right across the country. We are offering full-time jobs, uh, Las Cian Corla. At the IMO, IMO conference last week, I was able, again for the third year, to offer every graduate nurse in this country a full-time permanent job in the Irish Health Service, and that will, as you rightly say, help with the new conditions, reduce the number of agency staff. That's what happens over time. We weren't able to do that when I became minister. We've been able to do that now. And the measures that have been put in place by the HSE, which I believe are sensible, uh, will end at the end of next month. But it is an important period if we're to ensure that we have more resources to spend on the delivery of more public services this year, which is something I know we all want.